Hey everybody. Um, I am Sorrel. I'm this Mark. Is, this is Mark. And this is Relationship Rebellion. And I'm just going to say, if you're watching this live, please let us know by um, just putting something in the comments to let us know you're here. And today we're going to talk about the second losing strategy. And as we said before, the, lo the losing strategies, of which there are five, are something that you can find in Terry Reel's book, the new. Do you want to bring the book over? The new rules of marriage. You see that, can't you? And if you're using one of the losing strategies, it's probably not working. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a losing strategy, would it? So the second one is trying to control your partner. And we had a little chat about this morning, didn't we? And there are kind of two ways you could be controlling. Actually, it's probably more than two. But the two things that we've come up with are, first of all, trying to get your partner to do something like take the bins out or wash up or um, not leave their dirty socks all over the floor or, you know, those sorts of things. And sometimes they're bigger things, more significant things than that. And the other type is when you think that person should drink less or eat more healthily or work out more often or not work out quite as much. And it's for their own good. So when you endeavour to place your values on somebody else without their consent? You could put it that way, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tricky. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> and you know what? You might actually really love that person and you really might want them to have to be healthier. <clears throat> and they're wanting to be healthier too. And you're suggesting, oh, I know. Why don't you um, eat less red meat? And they're saying, yeah, but I love my red meat. I don't want to stop eating it. So why don't you give up what you love? Yes, exactly. So it's that business of thinking you know better and not really acknowledging that they have any um, expertise in the matter and that it really would be a good idea if they just did what you told them to. So mothers do this to their children. Yeah, to some extent. Because Obviously. the children are not ready for the world, so mummy yeah. has to tell you. Does this work in grown-up relationships? Not really, no. It just causes resentment. Yes. And actually, um, I was going to talk, talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a story of my own where um, my former sister-in-law was very keen that my husband and I at the time, who were both vegetarians, should start eating, well not start, should just eat some meat, like we'd go to her, their house and, oh, why don't you have a little bit of turkey? Or why don't you have a little bit of lamb or whatever it was? And that's just stop being vegetarian for a couple of hours while you're with us. And we both found it really irritating and a bit patronising and uh, just kind of challenging. misguided and challenging, yes. Very challenging. Yeah, so... It's, it's like dropping your religion whilst you're in this place. And it's part of oh, your yeah. being. That's, it is a bit, isn't it? <clears throat> that's a very weird thing to do to insist that a vegetarian eats a chop. <laughs> it is indeed very strange. And the funny thing about it is that, you know, if you're going to go with vegetarians and give them something vegetarian to eat, then your meat bill is going to come down a bit, isn't it? That's not really the point, though. But... Yeah, well, it's, no, it's, it's really interesting. It's asking someone to just behave in this way totally contrary to all of their beliefs. Yeah, exactly. Just for the time being. Is that all right? <clears throat> That's, it's, it sounds ill, con it's just ill considered. It's ill considered. It's, it hasn't thought about it. Exactly. Mm. And, and I have to say, I did wonder why. And I think they were both, she and her husband were both quite keen. But she, I'm sure she was anyway, for us to eat meat. Why? I didn't never understood the motivation for it. Unless it was that somehow, well, it, do you know what? It's all speculation. You know, was it because she felt like somehow um, we were better than her because we didn't eat meat? In which case, why would you even think that? Unless you've hooked yourself into somebody else's value system, which you don't really agree with anyway, and you're trying to live your life according to, so that still doesn't make any sense. So anyway, so the point of that story was, so when you recognise what it feels like to be put into, under that kind of pressure, when someone's trying to control your behaviour, then you certainly can see how unpleasant it is to do that to somebody else. Precisely that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. 
So, whilst we're not controlling our relationships, how do we control our relationships? When you don't control a relationship, you slightly... Okay, let's use, use my favourite metaphor of the plants in my garden. I don't control the plants in my garden. I don't stand out saying, grow, grow, grow. Um, I give them, hopefully I give them some compost now and again. And I, if, the, if it hasn't rained for a couple of days and it's dry, I'll also put some water down there. So it's like nurturing. So you it? don't control their growth, their, their development, but you do support it. I support it, yes. Okay. Yeah. And you just said about controlling a relationship. Mm -hmm. So there's that. So you can nurture the relationship. And of course you can nurture your other half. I did, of course, set you up with this fabulous. You did? Yeah. Very nicely. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So supporting the relationship yeah. would look totally different to controlling the I relationship. Agree. Yeah. Okay. And actually, I think you you really can't control a relationship because when you're trying to, to force something, you're, it's probably going to get derailed anyway. Well, the fact that you're trying to force it means you're probably in the wrong. Well, there's also that too. So, yeah. yeah. <sighs> so, there's a, a, another lovely story I really like, which is the one of the, the sun and the wind and the, the, the man in the rain. Well, big heavy overcoat, I think. And it's probably a spring day or an autumn day. And the sun and the wind have this little argument about who, who's going to be more likely to, to get that man to take his raincoat off or to get the man's raincoat off him, actually. And the wind says, oh, I can definitely get it off. I'll just blow it off. And says, so, oh, we'll see. So the wind blows and blows and blows. And of course, the man pulls his raincoat, oh, he's sorry, his overcoat around him much more tightly and holds on to it because he's chilly. And then the sun says, oh, that didn't work, did it? Sorry. And then and so says, well, let me have a go now. So the sun just comes out and shines and kind of burns off the clouds. And makes him hot. He makes him hot. And he takes his warm. coat off. And so, yes, that's a different approach to trying to control, isn't it? It's more of an encouragement or a nurturing or a... Yes, I suppose control suggests management. And um, people are going to kick against that, aren't they? <clears throat> but, of course, yes. But there is a lovely exchange of balances that goes on between in a relationship. And... Uh, I would substitute control for cooperation. Yes. Any day of the week. Yeah, yeah. If you, and also you, you're not going to get cooperation if you're trying to exert control, or exercise control, are you? No, you're not, because you're being dominant and generally yeah. unpleasant about stuff. Yes, exactly. Unpleasant is exactly. Well, right. you're a difficult it's company. Almost. You're forcing your dream upon others. Yeah. And um, without their. And they don't want to accept it, which is why they're not. Which is why they're not. So in the matter of the washing up. Yes. All right. One of our favourites. Well, it's a, it's a great battleground, you know, because yeah. all the examples you offered earlier, I recognise as sort of implicit bullying in that I've dropped my socks down there because you're going to pick them up. I won't do the washing up because you're going to do that. And oh, yeah. I'm not going to do this because you're going to do that. And I can't be bothered to do that because I expect you to do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so... <clears throat> You know, within that relationship, there's a certain um, discord anyway, isn't there? And, and in a sense, you could almost say that when you don't do the washing up, you are con attempting to control your other half because you know that they will do it. So it's a discord and... What, yes, because one doesn't want to serve. The other one wants to be served, but doesn't seem to move it forward. You know... It's, it's interesting. There's an irritation there between the pair of them. Otherwise, they'd be working together. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. as opposed to sniping and nagging yeah. and feeling bitter and twisted. Yes. About the bloody washing up. I mean, or, or whatever. Or whatever it is. It is. Yeah. And if the relationship is at this sort of, this really picky, irritable space, mm -hmm. you know, then that's really where examination needs to be. Why are you so tetchy with each other? And why don't you do things that she might like and things like You know, negligence is a really interesting statement in a relationship. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. You know, it tells us that it's not at peace any longer. It's moved into a war space. It, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And and when Terry Real talks about the big five don'ts, mm -hmm. you know, he's absolutely right because all of them are attacks. Yeah, they are. Yeah, and if your relationship yeah. is run on attacks and blocks and counterattacks, oh, and I've had relationships like that. Oh, so have I. We both have, haven't we? Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, when we roll through these things. 
<laughs> and we always think it's somebody else's fault, but we have to bring something to it ourselves, don't we? This business of yeah. you marry your destiny, you hook up with your, or you marry your unfinished work. You marry your unfinished business. Yes. From because, your childhood. That's right, because yeah. you both resonate with a certain frequency of disappointment and understand yes. each other. And uh, it's that interesting thing that we don't even really know why people end up marrying their unfinished business, but we do. So, well, they resonate with one another. But they yeah, resonate. Okay. And the unfinished business is not particularly singular. It's, it's you know, I imagine there's only about five types of unfinished business. That would be an interesting question. Well, wouldn't it? Because it we all comes. We could another day. We could. Yeah. yeah oh, fun. and actually, we should say mm -hmm. for anyone who hasn't already dropped off, <laughs> yeah. that we're also going to talk about what you can do instead of trying to control your partner. And we're not going to spend the entire half an hour telling you what you shouldn't be doing because that would be long. Be long and be a bit boring and it'll be well we want to give something to take away with you so i think that the thing about the control thing is almost like a two-way street because let's take the traditional view of a man who leaves his socks on the floor instead of putting him in the hamper and he's 30 underpants and whatever else and well i won't go into all the gory details and she's saying oh god's sake can't you pick your socks up and put them in the hamper it's just just around the side of the door or whatever it is so they're both, in a way, doing that control thing in different ways. And his is a bit more kind of implicit, like you said, bullying. Well, actually, he started it by leaving leaving his crap behind. Well. And there is a lack of civility there because he's treating her like his mum. Well, yeah, and he may be done. You know, unfinished business. boom, yeah. boom. And, and she's yeah. stepping up. She's been his mum for a bit and she's now cross about being his mum. And, and there's also that. And you, you, yes, so that's just the, that's just the lack of develop, personal development there. You know, if you're going to keep a friend, you've got to be nice to it. It. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I suppose as the the, the mum or the wife, yeah. you know, the tendency then is to get, to develop quite a lot of resentment about the fact that he's not picking up after himself or he's, all the things that he's not doing or is doing when he shouldn't be doing them, like coming home really drunk and, um, throwing up in the toilet and not cleaning up after himself. All of the things that sometimes women do these things too, to be fair, it's just men. Um, but when you have that resentment, that's not really no better than the control because you're holding on. It's like they say, holding on to a hot coal, thinking it will burn somebody else. Absolutely. Yeah. So It's, it's uneducated. So the, the kind of, the solution that I like for this is, Clearly, nagging doesn't work. And nagging is trying to control, isn't it? Yeah. But when you give somebody the choice, like, could you do this? As opposed to, why the hell don't you do this? That's one thing. And they can actually say no. You have to allow them to say no. But at least then you've actually put it back over in their court saying, could you do this? And hoping they'll step up and behave like an adult and say, yeah, of course I will. This is for the nice ones. The nice ones will notice. The nice ones will respond very, very well to yeah. that subtle little, I would love you to. They'll, they'll work with you. They will. Um, by the time they're getting into relationship guidance. Well, I think we're talking about people in general here. So, yeah, yeah and you're right. The nice ones will do those things. The actually, the sweeter ones. The sweeter, okay, the sweeter ones. The sweeter ones. Um, then there's the other version. Well, then it's going to be it's going to be like a spectrum, isn't it? From yes, the sweet but careless, through uh, to through the the still fairly sweet but seriously forgetful, to the I don't give a shit, and on there, on that probably. There we are. If you're into the I don't give a shit, then you've got a bit of a problem on your hands. You, yes, you do. But it's a and it's a couple thing, isn't it? Because it is. Both of you involved. In but all of them. In this particular example, he's treating her like his mum. Yes, he is. If he's leaving his socks on that's the floor. The, that's the big thing. That's the big thing that you yeah. can't take into grown-up relationships. You know, no. It just goes wrong. It just goes wrong. <laughs> it just, <laughs> it's not a good look, you know. But it is. It's just like, I've never, I don't have boys. I've only got girls. But I hear about boys leaving their clothes all over the bedroom floor. So it is about like being a teenage boy, isn't it? The sock thing. Yeah, well, yes, because if one's careless, if one inflicts, if, if it's an issue in a in a, in a couple, mm -hmm. and you know this is actually quite interesting because the template is the house is her domain, 
the outer world yes. is his. Yes. And so therefore, if he's in the house, he really needs to honour that. Because and, if he does, she will... Well, that's what we were, was that yesterday? It was, yes, it was yesterday we were talking about that, wasn't it? Yes. Because, so, what I would, as I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, what I said was, in the kind of the whole patriarchal structure, mm. the public sphere is the man's sphere and the private sphere is the woman's sphere. Mm. So therefore, technically, she should be in charge because it's her sphere. But who guess who is the head of the household in that same patriarchal structure? It's always the man, unless he's died and gone out of the picture, and it's, then it's the matriarch within that household. Yes, it's just... So it's, there's a contradiction there, because yeah. he believes he should be in charge because yes. he's the head of the household, yes. and she believes she should be in charge because she is her sphere. Because socially, culturally, this is her yeah. sphere. Yeah. And, hey, who does most of the cooking and the childcare and manages the laundry? And so on and so forth. Well, he's in charge. Well, he's in charge. So, in an, a kind of a an adult relationship, you would say, or you hopefully you would say, well, that may be how it's been set up culturally or ideologically or however you want to call it, but this is how we're going to run our household. Yes, it's kind of, personally, I'd like to not treat you like an employee. Yeah, quite. Would that be all right? Yes. You know. Um, yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And like you said yesterday. Um, when you repair the fence, you'll be the person in charge mm -hmm. because you know about repairing fences. Mm -hmm. And I forget what it was in relation to what I do, but anyway. <laughs> cooking. See? If I'm if I'm cooking, then you're happy to be my gaffer? Yeah, I'm not happy to be, your, be your, your gaffer for no, the fence. Your labourer. My labourer. Yeah. <laughs> I carry on labourers. Get, get ideas above the station. <laughs> <laughs> I like gaffer. Okay, that means so. boss. Oh, sorry, I thought... Oh, no, I'm thinking the best boy. Sorry, never mind film, film credits. Let's get away from this silly conversation. <laughs> it gets out of hand. Yes. So, ideally, in a relationship, the person who is best equipped will lead on certain areas yes. and be supported by the other party. And then, of course, there will be other things the other party will be more favoured to. Yes. And then the support moves. And this might be a way... Of uniting both of your resources to ma manage the world, to handle the world. Yes, because that's that also be going to need to be handled by the two of you who yes. have decided to sail in a ship together. Yes. Yeah, you know, whilst hating each other. Well, hopefully not hating well, each other. Well, that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? Yeah, and you know, it's really interesting because, because for myself, because you know, you're likely to model relationships that you've seen. Of course. And so the first happens, one, first one is going to be a folks. Yeah. And then it's going to be everybody else. But the first, the first, the first one, which is like you say, your folks, mm -hmm. is going to have the biggest impact and be the most powerful mm -hmm. and the hardest to break free of, if you like. Mm -hmm. And if I remember back to my childhood and my parents, my dad was technically the head of the household because he was the one with a better paid job. Well, my mother didn't have a job until I was about thirteen, I think. Um, but she ran. She ran the household. She definitely ruled the roost there. Mm -hmm. um, with a bit of an iron fist, if I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. It wasn't It wasn't a particularly happy relationship for a, a long time. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they ever... I don't know if they ever addressed what was going on between them, but if they did, they never sorted it until near, near towards the end of her life, maybe the last five years. So I forget what I was saying. All this. I've lost my thread again. <laughs> we model the relationships that we've witnessed. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And so, and if we haven't had put any thought into that, we will perfectly model the relationships that we've been exposed no, to. Even when we have put thought into it, we still end up slipping back into those things, don't we? Well, unless we've got a new code that tells us what yeah. to do. And be, being very, very conscious and mindful of what we're doing. Yes. And I think it can possibly be condensed into try not to tell them off because it doesn't go well mm. and have a go at being relatively friendly about all of this when we lose those two things yeah. it all goes yeah to a, another space it's not a peaceful space any longer do you know i think the other thing is is that when you i want to go back to the socks because we've been talking about socks on the floor if i if i make it seem like there's something wrong with you because you drop your socks on the floor mm -hmm. that's that's quite shaming and it's not going to be well received.
But if I just jokingly say, oh, goodness, are you that, have you been really tired this week because you dropped your socks on the floor every morning? Or every evening even. Then oh, maybe that's not the best way of putting it, but, you know, don't make it, it's like you always say, go, don't go ad hominem, don't go to the, the man himself, but it's just the behaviour you're addressing. Actually, interestingly enough, that, you know, there's a thousand ways to say it. The question is, is what you feel when that's you say it. That's that too as well, yeah. You know, and, and if you just slid past me and said, why am I picking up your socks every day? I don't know. <laughs> you, know you know, I'll notice that. I'll notice that. Woo. You never actually dropped your socks. This is entirely relevant. To well, them. that's true. But if there was a, if I was habitually doing something, yeah. you, you, you know, which which banged your tetchy gland, you'd, you'd want to mention it, wouldn't you? Of course I would, yeah. but I'd want to do it in a way that didn't make it seem like there was something wrong with you personally. Well, and that would be very, very wise, because you wouldn't want to get me back up, would you? No, of course I wouldn't. Exactly. No. And so you'd slide by with something relatively friendly and invitational. Yeah. And in, engaging in some sort of way. Why do you leave your socks here? Are, why do you leave your socks here? Are you waiting for all the lost socks to collect <laughs> and worship the laundry basket? <laughs> you know, you can have all sorts of fun whilst it's making a point. True. You know, yes. and and it doesn't actually have to be this sort of challenge. You, you're wrong. Do it my way, or something horrible will happen. Mm. Well, I can't ever watch your songs that, ever again. That's right. And um, you know, communications that start off that, that that have tone in them and have direct eye contact and have posturing and and have telly offy wag. Telly offy wag. You know, those mm. those are not conversations had between friends, are they? No. No, they're not. No, they're not. And if one has lost that value in one's yeah. union... To be honest, I wouldn't... That's an to, issue. <laughs> I wouldn't want to speak that way to my children when they were little either. No, you wouldn't. I'm sure I was a bit telly some of the time, but well, also... Do you know, no one's innocent. We've all been there. Yeah. The question is how long one stays. Exactly. And whether one can develop a softer style. It, and it is about the softer style, isn't it? That's because we want the yield, don't yeah. we? We want the yield of a softer, more... And actually, to be honest, there's no one right way to do it because everybody has different, like the whole colour plasticine thing. You know, everyone's got a different set of colours to draw on. That's true. But on a general level, you're either someone who can get people to work with you well, you can't. Oh yes, well, like, all I'm saying, you're absolutely right. All I'm saying is mm. that there are different. There's probably a thousand different ways of doing that, and you just choose and develop the one that works for you. And like you know, I would not attempt to grow a, a um, rhododendron in my garden because I know that soil is nowhere near acid enough. That Lovely be. horticultural reference. <laughs> so use the skills that are appropriate to the job. And use the skills that work for you. Like, you know, is your garden and garden full of acid soil, or is your the garden of you of who you are, or is your is your garden a talky soil, which is very good for growing lettuces in, but rubbish for rhododendrons. And so, you know, bring forth whatever grows well in in you. Have I gone? Have I gone a bit too? You've gone a bit. This you've metaphor? gone a bit Alan Titchmarsh on this. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> thinks this is Radio Four Gardeners Program. Yes, but yes, you, you use what's going to work in the environment. And yeah. if you've got a, a traumatised character who is behaving in a hostile manner, because yeah. they're always traumatised, which is why they're behaving in a hostile yeah. manner, yeah. then standing in front of them in objection normally goes quite badly. It does. So it's better to turn up with biscuits and something less serious Yes. Um, because, you know, that's a that's a mind that recognises it's in care mode. You know, you've got someone yeah. who's being a bit crazy here. And, you know, the new relationship stance or style, if one has got this challenging thing going on, mm -hmm. might actually be to recognise that there's some trauma there and the first move would be care, because care is the airbag in these conflict situations. Boop! Out it pops. Yes. And then suddenly everyone who's behaving weird goes, oh, dear, they've noticed I'm behaving weird. Yes. And this is how, so we come in and we say, are you okay? Are you all right? Should I call someone? Is there an emergency? Yeah, anything. Well, will a cup of coffee do? Will a cup of coffee yeah. do? We could probably do it. And you say, I'm fine. 
And they say, do you not think you're a bit cross and shouty? No, I don't! <laughs> I've had this conversation. I imagine you I have. have. I've <laughs> had. I've had. Do you make clever decisions when you're angry? Yes! Are you making what? You know, so and so forth. Well, actually, nobody makes clever no, decisions when they're angry. Of course, of course, of course. Have you listen. noticed that you're angry, actually? Yes. It's the one that I normally are. Have you noticed that you're angry? <laughs> you might be I am not angry. Stamp, <laughs> crash, bang. You know, this is why my relationship is doomed to failure. No. <laughs> it's terrible. Because obviously, I'm incredibly irritating. I know I'm angry a lot. Mm. Mm. You irritate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'm just going to let everyone know that yeah. if they want to, they can download the my PDF of the five losing strategies. And there's the link. Do it. It's um, great. It's just a little one pager. It summarizes them very briefly. Um, and it's kind of pretty too. Yes. As I like to think, make things pretty. And you could, you could go under the heading of why do you argue this way? Do you know what? When we get into the why. Then we're going to go back to childhood. Well, it's a short it's a short lesson. It's because you learned it from your folks. Is there a better way? I'm going to just challenge you on that. Because you may have learned it from your folks, or you may have learned it in the context of your folks to survive your folks. Yes. So you may not be doing exactly the same thing as what your folks did. Or they're very often actually, in a, in a sense, you are. Because if, if, you, if your dad did withdrawal, then maybe you do withdrawal. Or if your mum did alcoholism, maybe you do alcoholism. Got him. Just, just I'm telling you about one little thing, and he pisses off across the room. <laughs> Let's come back with Harriet now, so that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it's whatever you you're bringing into that conflictual relationship is is something that you learned, and I will say created, actively created in childhood, in response to the environment in which you grew up. Um, a bit like the acid soil in my garden. So this is all the this is all the uh, um, uh, challenge stances that the irresponsible child. What's the child? So the first one is the wounded child. The wounded child. And the second one, which comes a bit later, I think after like age of six or seven, is the adaptive child, and that's the one that tends to do all this, the nasty. Naughty so that's stuff. that's the one that's doing all our when you fall into this objectionable condition, and you're just yes. busy blocking everything that's coming to yes. you. You're an adaptive child at that point. What well, you could be ang angry, you could be withdrawing. Do you know that makes so much sense? Because you know, at your at our parents' knee, at our mother's knee, did we learn that being in the wrong is bad and incurs punishment? And so, therefore, we will do yeah. anything not to be in, not the to wrong. Be in the wrong. Yeah, absolutely. So we will just argue the toss. And being in the wrong is all about. A truth discussion last man standing oh yes absolutely oh goodness um even to the level of like um no mummy i didn't do it teddy did it come on I never that's, said that. that is, it's genius though isn't it it is genius absolutely oh no it's, sorry that's wrong i did do it teddy made me do it i think that yes way. um or or otherwise you know siblings are accusing each other and he he or she started it and all of those things and those things show up again in relationships, like, you know, between a couple where it's like, well, you started it. No, you started it. It's like, who, who cares who started it? Just stop it. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. And anyway, I was, we're coming to the end. And I was just thinking, shall we let the, the lovely people out there know what we're going to be doing next weekend? Can you pass me the book? Because yes. the, we're going to do the third losing strategy next weekend. The third losing strategy. And the third losing strategy, if you can bear with me, but I never can remember them in order is unbridled self-expression fantastic you see yes. you might as well learn how to lose first <laughs> you might as well learn how to lose before you can then learn to do the other thing and i don't like victory and i don't like winning because winners come with losers right? they do indeed. so i don't want to really win what i want to do is not lose or right? have a win-win situation where you both win but that's usually because both of you are cooperating together. That's right. And you only need one mind to do that. You mean the mind that's out there? I mean the, I mean the mind that's offering the best options, which you will be if you're not doing the five losing things. Do you know what? I do not want to get into a debate about how many minds are going to be involved in this. And, and 
How much time Harold we got left? is agreeing with me. We've got no minutes at all. Bye bye. Is it bye bye? Bye bye. Bye everybody. <laughs> Say goodbye, Mark. Bye bye. Thank you very much for having yeah, us. It was lovely being with you this afternoon. And have a wonderful weekend. Yeah. Bye. Do. bye.